Now you are about to see what happens to a hamster if you keep it in almost wild conditions for a long time. This is the second part of the experiment and we have a lot to show you. In the first part, we created and first released Stafford into his wild hamsterium. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to watch it first. We arrived the next morning and found no Stefan on the surface, but a messed up terrarium that looked like a battlefield. No one knows what happened here during the night. But then something stirred under the ground and in a couple of seconds our miner emerged from under it. Covered in clay, dirt and resembling a hobo. And he begins to run around the terrarium and dig everything he sees in his way. We just thought that he needs to discharge some energy, so we put a running wheel inside. He spun the wheel for a while, but he got bored pretty quickly and started running around again. Maybe Stefan's wild instincts kicked in and he went completely feral. And he was digging not just small holes, but huge tunnels, which sometimes reached the very bottom of the hamsterium. We were sorry to see him destroying everything, but on the other hand, it was a great opportunity to observe how fast and effectively hamsters can make their way underground in the wild. Look at his digging technique. At first, he shovels the clay in front of him with his front paws and moves it under himself. Then the hind legs come in and it scoops up the ground behind it. And all this went on for almost an hour. He got to the very bottom, even to the layers of claydite, and he began to throw it upwards. It got to the point where the house was barely standing on the surface and was already floating in mid-air rather than on the ground. Cookie is shocked by what's happening and is possibly also thinking about how to stop this chaos, otherwise the whole project is in danger. At some point it seemed to us that he was looking for something, but we didn't understand what for or how to help him. And then we thought that maybe he just wants to eat. I took a small seat and brought it up to him. Stefan grabbed it right away, calmed down and then started chewing. Then we gave him a piece of cabbage, which he also happily devoured. When he ate enough, he sat down, stuck his legs out and probably at that moment realized what he had done. You're not mad at me? Of course not, Stefan. Look at yourself. You're so cute and fat. We can forgive you anything. Then he turned around and started digging a tunnel through the whole terrarium all the way to this hole. He barricaded himself in there and went about his business for a while. At first we were very afraid when he was buried on all sides and wanted to dig him out, because he had to breathe some air, and how can fresh air and oxygen get to him through the soil walls? But apparently nature has thought of everything, and he knows what he's doing. Perhaps when he doesn't move, he consumes very little oxygen, and what's inside the hole is enough for a few hours. Meanwhile, Cookie and I are watching all this destruction and realize that something has to change. Tearing everything around, Stefan not only makes a mess inside the terrarium, but he also throws the clay outside its borders. We waited for him to rest, get out of his burrow and moved him into an old cage for a couple of hours. Which he was also a little excited about. We decided to redo everything, and first of all, we took out Stefan's house and all the shabby plants. After that, we took out all the soil to separate it from the expanded clay, which we are not going to use this time, because Stefan will mix it together with the clay anyways, in which case it has no use. It was very convenient to separate these balls from the clay by using the spatula we used to separate Cookie's poop from the sand. There was snow outside and it was getting colder, but that didn't stop us. We needed to get some fresh plants and forest soil that they were used to. While picking up the soil, we noticed these larvae on the surface. We wondered how they survived in such a frost. We decided to take them to the terrarium, 
Maybe something will hatch from them, or Stefan will just eat them. We also decided to take such a small and cute tree. Hopefully Stefan won't rip it out of the ground next time he gets mad. And the last thing, we took a whole layer of soil along with the attached moss. This way it's easier for it to root. After that, we went back home to rebuild our hamsterium. As I said, we don't use claydite now. We mix regular soil with forest soil. Because forest plants can't survive in just regular soil. We place a layer of grass and moss as a whole piece in the right part of the hamsterium. Set the house in its place and everything is ready. Now we'll try to meet all Stefan's needs so he doesn't trash everything we built there. Welcome to the renovated hamsterium. Stefan walked around the property and ran to his cabin and what he thought was his old hole. But it wasn't there. No problem, you can dig yourself a new one. You like doing that anyways. Well, but you have to dig inside your cabin, not outside it. So Stefan did that, because he's smart and he went right back to his burrow and started digging a tunnel. If you remember, the first Stefan had a picture in his cage. We decided to continue this tradition and decorated a cabin of Stefan Jr. At first he liked the idea and often looked at it while doing his business in the cabin, but at one point we saw something red on the bottom of the basement of the house. Something's wrong. It's Stefan's blood, I thought. But no! It turned out to be our painting. Stefan tore it down and carefully tore it into pieces, scattering it around. Apparently, he does not understand the value of works of art. To him, it's just building material for his lair. In general, hamsters are active at night, while people sleep at this time. And we are no exception. So we decided to install a hidden camera monitoring Stefan at night, but there's a problem. The vision through the mesh which prevents Stefan from escaping would be very poor. We thought about it and decided that we could move the mesh if we increased the height of the walls with some cardboard from an old box. We put the pieces of cardboard together like this. We glued walls together with hot glue, installed stiffeners and our Great Wall of China is ready. Cookie checks the perimeter of the fortress for holes and gives the command to turn the camera on and start continuous night video recording. What happens next and how Stefan behaves in the absence of an observer we will see soon in the next video. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it.